I've been reading up on everything there is to know about the OnePlus Nord, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I am properly excited about most things regarding this phone, but there is also a small issue I have with the phone. I'll delve into what I'm exactly disappointed about later in the video, but first, let's touch on why I'm excited. And it really begins with the marketing campaign for this smartphone, because the folks at OnePlus really know how to generate hype. I mean, they're such professionals when it comes to this that they even got people excited over the bloody box the phone comes in. The funny thing is that people got so hype about this box that they ended up doing a giveaway. Yes, you heard me right. A giveaway of an empty box. Like, what the heck is going on? And it doesn't end there because OnePlus also gave away a phone to the person who could come up with the best OnePlus Nord related meme. Genuinely, that is a brilliant idea. But one thing I have noticed with this whole campaign is that it feels different. It doesn't feel like a big corporation is behind this. It feels like more of a startup. In fact, this OnePlus Nord feels like a sub-brand of sorts, and that's what really excites me. I mean, take a look at the dedicated Instagram page for this smartphone, and you notice a few things. One, the prominent use of teal. Now, OnePlus has always used the iconic red hue in every bit of promotional material so far. And so this change of shade, I think, represents the OnePlus Nord is going to be a little different from the usual line of OnePlus devices we come to expect. And this is also inferred in the name itself, OnePlus Nord. If you didn't know, this is the first OnePlus device to be named after a word, because if you take a look at their naming scheme so far, it's always consisted of a letter or a number. And on top of all of that, they're also plastering hashtag new beginnings literally everywhere. Oh, and also, there's a huge fancy AR launch for this device on July 21st, so couple all of that together, and I think you kinda understand that this isn't gonna be some one-off device for OnePlus. But what's really got me tingling is the whole narrative OnePlus is creating. The whole one-liner of this device is that it's OnePlus going back to their roots. It's OnePlus trying to create another OnePlus One. But now we come to what has kind of disappointed me, and maybe I set my expectations too high for this, but we've been officially told that the OnePlus Nord will be under 500 euros. And we all know that basically means it's gonna be 499 euros, which I think is around 450 pounds. Don't get me wrong, for what you're getting, that is an acceptable price but it's only acceptable. When comparisons were being made to the legendary OnePlus One, I assumed that they would price it super aggressively, something like 299 pounds, for example. And I feel that in the European market where this phone is primarily launching in, there are already a slew of competitive offerings at that sub 500 pound price bracket. And a lot of them have arguably better specs. Most importantly though, I feel like OnePlus missed a chance where they could have undercut the iPhone SE. Now yes, I know that if you compare the iPhone SE and the OnePlus Nord on paper, there are some clear advantages the OnePlus Nord has that could warrant the slightly higher price. But in my opinion, that doesn't matter as much in the budget segment because as the name suggests, price comes first. And when an average consumer sees Apple, who is a much more reputable brand, selling an iPhone at $399 with an A13 chip and six years of updates, you can't really blame them for going with the iPhone. OnePlus can try and flex their 90 hz super buttery fluid AMOLED display all they like, but at the end of the day, is the average consumer going to pay a slightly higher price for such a frivolous feature? But if the OnePlus Nord had undercut the SE, I feel like that would have given this phone a fighting chance. Plus it would have forced a bunch of other Android companies to follow suit and of course bring their prices lower and be more competitive. Now I do want to mention that in India, this phone will be seriously cheap, I'm hearing around 200 $199 in their market. And I guess that makes sense since OnePlus makes their phones there but also have a huge fan following. But a part of me obviously wishes that every country got a bit of that love. Of course, nothing is really set in stone just yet, so I'm all in for OnePlus blowing me away on July the 21st when this device launches. And on that note, I end it here. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya, peeps. Word at the end thingy is boom. Put it in the comments, people. Thank you.